Okay, so we almost always start in a seated meditation, but today we're going to start reclined. So you can go ahead and set yourself up on your back. Make sure that you have a yoga strap handy because we will be using that. If you don't have a yoga strap, just go ahead and grab a long belt or maybe even a tie. Um, maybe you even have a like karate belt. That would work. If your low back, we're gonna do some hip work today. If your low back is really sensitive, put a little something under the knees just for this beginning um, opening of the practice. So you can have some support under the knees and we're just starting out in our Shavasana. Palms can be face up, or if you like, you can rest your palms on the front of the hips. Just laying your body on the earth. breathing here. Nothing to sit up against or pull away from. If anything, just feeling your energetic body dropping into the physical body, like you're taking that outer layer and just letting it settle towards your center. And as you let that weighted sense come into the body, you can feel backs of the legs touching the earth or the support, and back of your head, and backs of your shoulder blades. Layering as we enter into this practice, your breath, your body. So we're just starting with that very simple portal into presence. You can feel your belly rising and falling with the breath. If you want, you can try on a little hum or a moan as you exhale, releasing some sound, releasing pent up energy releasing anything that's been stuck. Ah. Couple more breathing in through the nose and breathing out through your mouth. Energetic release, energetic clearing using your breath. And as we prepare to move into a short period of silence, does your body feel any different than when you first came into this shape, into this position? Maybe you feel more length through the spine, back body. Maybe you feel into a little bit more of that stillness, a little bit more willingness to be present with yourself and with your body. And we'll just take about two minutes here, a chance to let your brain waves balance, a chance to do nothing.
And coming back to that awareness with your breath. Awareness into your body, feeling where your body's touching the earth. Back body, back of the head, glutes, calves, heels. And then when you're ready, you're going to plant your feet on the earth like a half bridge preparation. You can move your support out of the way if you had something under the knees. And then already creating some length for the low back. We're going to take our hands to the front of the hips and just set an intention. Mantra, motivation, dedication, inspiration, something that feels good that you're wanting to call in and carry with you through the day. If you don't have one, you can try on I Cultivate Calm. And then slowly opening the eyes, we're going to reach the arms up overhead. So your feet are planted, knees are bent. Exhale, hands to the earth. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to the earth. We'll continue like that. If you have the playlist ready to go, we're going to press play on the playlist, otherwise breathing the arms up overhead. And so we're just going to press play. One, two, three. Continuing with your breath. And then palms at the earth. Inhale up. Exhale. Two more. Really planting your feet into the earth, heels, balls of the feet, toes touching. Exhale. This time we're adding on that cat cow, so arching the spine as you lift the arms. Exhale, rounding the spine. So you can feel your sacrum getting a little massage, sticking your tail out. Exhale, tucking your tail between the legs. Two more. Inhale. Simple movement. Exhale. Can you feel how the breath goes all the way to the edge, all the way to that maximum expansion, contraction of the diaphragm? Exhale, hands at your sides. This time, hands come up towards the ceiling, and then we're going to draw the right knee in. As you place your foot back to the earth, arms float up overhead, and we're just marching it out. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can draw your forehead towards the knee, curling up. Inhale. Never need to keep up with my pace. Just follow your breath, your rhythm. Two more. Inhale up, exhale, left knee is going to pull in. And so already right here, feel more energy through the right foot. The right foot is your standing foot and, and that gives stability for the back of the pelvis so that your hips aren't moving around. We're just moving the leg and we're going to start with small knee circles. You see if you can make the smallest range of motion possible. So we're not going for big circles. We're just starting to stir in the hip while we Continue to keep length in the spine, and that right foot helps us to do that. Other direction, stirring deep in the hip joint. Keeping it simple here. Okay, pull that knee in towards the chest. Now draw your knee away from your chest so that your arms straighten out. And then continue to press into the hands to lift the head, neck, and shoulders away from the earth. Exhale, release everything down. Squeeze it in. 
Inhale, start with that knee, pressing into the hands, arms straighten out, and it's the action of the knee pressing into the hands to help lift the torso. Exhale, release, we'll do one more. And using the biceps, relax your neck. Inhale, activate towards this archer, archer shape. Exhale, squeeze it in. Plant that foot to the earth. Inhale, arms float up. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, right knee in. Start to create those circles. And sometimes it's nice to start really big and you can even spiral your way towards that smaller movement. Activate through your standing foot, your left foot. And so we're starting to let the arms really take over control of the leg. Relax your belly, relax your throat, relax the muscles around your eyes. And then other direction with that knee. Two more. Hug it in. Inhale, draw the knee away from the chest, straighten out the arms. Continue to press, lifting the torso. Exhale, release everything down. Use your biceps, squeeze it in. Inhale, knee draws away. Oh, last one. Exhale. Space between your ears and your shoulders. Exhale, everything down. Replace that foot towards the earth. Arms float up. Exhale, both knees in. And then just rock side to side here. Plant your feet to the earth. Take your feet as wide as your yoga mat and just windshield wiper the, the knees. So knees over to the left, up and over to the right. And so the idea here is that we're creating more of a passive range of motion range of movement for the top of the femur. Same thing we were just doing. Inhale up, exhale over. The last one, we're gonna draw the knees back towards the chest, Apanasana. And you're gonna let your hands cup the knees. You're really letting your hands take over the legs and we're drawing the knees away from each other and then together. Relax the back of your neck. Okay, other direction. These can be pretty wide or whatever feels good. But the idea is, again, letting your arms do the work for passive movement, relaxing the top of the hip, relaxing the bottom of your belly. And letting your breath flow. Okay, let's plant left foot to the earth, right foot to the sky and take some ankle circles. Other direction. And then we'll take our figure four, fold it across left, sorry, right hand onto your right knee and we're just folding the knee in and then away. Like you're opening and closing a book, flex out that right foot to protect the right knee, your moving leg. Can you create more length in your spine as you're moving this leg around? Okay, pause here. As you press your right knee away from you, you're using your hand to do that. We're gonna add on that arching and rounding of the low back. So you're tucking your tail and then extending it, rocking forward and back on the sacrum. These are small movements 
that help to release those deeper attachments at the top of the femur. We have all these different layers that hold us together. And sometimes certain layers hold on a little bit more than we would like, maybe causing pain, tightness, other patterns in the body. Okay, come back towards neutral, stick that foot back towards the sky, basic hamstring stretch on the right side. And now we're gonna extend the leg long on the mat, inhale, arms float up. And then exhale, draw the knee, single leg bicycle as you bring your arms back to the earth. Foot comes up towards the sky. And then one more time, arms float up overhead, that leg comes away from you. And then bicycle it in as the arms come back towards the earth. Arms float up, single leg bicycle. Exhale, bend the knee, hands to the earth. We'll do one more. Exhale, hand to the earth, replace your foot next to the left and then inhale, left foot towards the sky, basic hamstring stretch. Add on your ankle circles. It's okay if the knee is bent. Following the breath in, following the breath out. Other direction, keeping it simple. Can you press a little bit more into your standing leg and then lengthen your spine? Okay, figure four. Left hand, left knee, and let it fold in and then away. And so as we start to activate the inner thigh here, it can also help to release muscles at the outside of the hip, external rotators that sometimes really start to hang on a little bit more than we'd like. Relax your neck, relax your jaw, relax the muscles around your ears. Last one, exhale, press that knee away from you, pause, and then out on the pelvic tilts, rounding and arching low back. Your hips stay on the earth. Find your breath and let it be easy. One side might feel a little different than the other, that's okay. Releasing judgment, releasing expectations. Inhale, come back towards neutral. Left foot towards the sky, arms up overhead. Release that foot all the way to the earth. Long leg, single leg bicycle. Bend the knee, bring your arms to the earth. Foot comes all the way up. And then extend that leg long as you reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, bend at the knee, heel drags up. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold that leg in, hands to the earth. Last one, inhale, length. Exhale, replace your left foot next to the right, hands to the earth. This time we're gonna take the right leg and just fold it cross leg all the way over the left. So more like a eagle leg than a figure four. And we're just gonna come into an easy twist. So let your knees fall to the left. And if you have a block, you can rest the block under your knees or maybe even just your hand under the knee for some support. If it's available to take your knees all the way to the earth, go ahead. And then your choice, you can keep your sternum and your gaze towards the ceiling. You're still twisting if you're doing that. 
or you can take it further with either a goalpost arm, T the arm, and if you'd like, let your gaze fall to the right. Okay, come back towards the center. Use your belly to anchor towards the spine. Unwind the legs, left leg folds up and over. Take your time to come into it. So we always have three parts of the pose. Entering the pose, staying in the pose, so much to discover there. And then slowly coming out of the pose. So you let yourself set it up. Use your alignment cues, your props if you need them. And then once you're there, you get to figure out what can I add on? Energetic movements. Maybe it's just the breath. And then if you'd like, maybe adding on another variation. If you'd like to take the twist further, opening up your chest, letting your gaze fall. Is there more length available in your spine? Is there more length available in your breath? One more chance to just let go right here. And then slowly coming back towards center, use your belly button to anchor the front body towards the back body. Unwind the legs. And we're gonna use the strap in a little bit, but first let's just do a couple seated stretches. So inhale, arms float up overhead. Exhale, we're gonna sit up. And let's come towards seated tree. Actually, I'm gonna face you. So draw your right knee back. And we're going to let the foot come away from the pelvis so there's space here. And then you can sit tall, kickstand arms. That might be enough for you. You might already be feeling enough of a stretch. Or you can fold over this front leg. Let's keep the spine long. So rather than rounding, I want you to really use those muscles next to the spine to keep length between your tailbone and the top of your head. Can you hear your own breath? Coming back towards neutral and staying there if you have your kickstand. If you need to bend this knee slightly to give that length for the low back, that's okay. You can also take your support under the hips. And let's fold forward one more time if that's available. And then switching sides. Draw the left leg in. Right leg long. Set yourself up. Kickstand arms or start to fold. Can you feel both sit bones on the earth? Inhale back to the center, last one, folding or just pausing and sitting tall. Lots of energy through that left leg, sorry, right leg, right quad, pressing down. And even if the leg is bent, you can still activate through this thigh. Inhale, come all the way back up. Baddha Konasana, bring the feet together. And this time we are, we're gonna take the knees up, up, up. Exhale, draw the knees away from each other. Sit a little bit taller. 
If it's too much to grab the feet and you have to round your spine, take your kickstand arms. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, draw the knees up, place your feet pretty wide here. And coming back to that windshield wiper passive range of motion for the leg, we're just letting the knees fall to one side and then the other. And you can take your hands pretty far behind you. Inhale up, exhale over. If you wanna add on, you can sweep your torso up and around, almost like you're moving in towards that variation or modification of a half pigeon. Forty, um, sorry, 90 degree angle with the knee. Two more, inhale, exhale. Okay, coming back to the center and then we're gonna come towards our tabletop position. So figure out how to get there. We're just gonna do a couple poses before we go back to our spine and do some of that strap work. So we're gonna take hip circles. So the hips are drawing around the knees. And then other direction. You can add on some neck stretches if you want. My hip finally just cracked. It's been like on the edge, on the edge of that release this whole time. Okay. Use your belly to support the low back. Okay, come through neutral, tuck your toes. We're gonna sit back to stretch the bottoms of the feet. Coming back to whatever version. So maybe just towards here is enough for you or if you can sit all the way up, go ahead. Stretching out bottoms of the feet. We're rocking forward, untuck the toes and then stretching the arches of the feet to whatever degree is available for you. Couple more times, tuck the toes, find your breath. Yes, it might be painful, but make sure that you're just working with what's available rather than coming to that place of persistent resistance. So what environment are you creating for your body to get a release where it's available? Two more, breathing in, breathing out. Okay, this time rock forward. We'll take a brief downward dog, lengthen your spine. You can walk it out one knee bends and then the other. And drop your knees, cow pose, drop your belly. You can lift your gaze towards the front of the mat or maybe up. Exhale, cat pose. Really press your hands to the earth, drop your head, lift your belly. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, neutral. Step your right foot forward, coming to lizard. And you can use your blocks if you have them. We use the blocks to create more length for the spine. So rather than rounding to touch the earth, we can have that length here. Okay, so we're in your lizard. The foot is outside the hands. We're gonna tuck the back toes, straighten that back leg, and then spin the foot down. So it's almost like you're in a warrior one or moving towards a wide kind of funky side angle. And we are, we're gonna open up and spin that arm, big arm circles. And so your right knee is pressing into the right arm. You're either hand on the earth or on the blocks. Okay, pause here with your hand on your hip or if you wanna try adding on, we're gonna face your torso towards the earth and you reach your hands out towards the left side of the mat. This active stretch for the hip. 
Okay, exhale, hands to the earth, pop the back heel up, come towards your version of lizard. You can externally rotate that right leg. Maybe use your hand to coax the knee away from you. Maybe you wanna add on for the quad stretch, grabbing that back foot. Release that top arm if you grabbed the foot. Okay, and we're actually gonna to move towards our skandasana. So walk the right foot next to the right hand and you're coming towards your side lunge. So we're popping up and over. And then we're gonna switch over, up and over to the other side. And then switching side to side, adding on any variation you like. And if you need to be up a lot higher, you can be here. Just moving the hips side to side, getting an inner thigh stretch. Skandasana side lunge. Oh, last one, we're gonna end on that left side, other side. Up and over. Okay, and as you turn your torso towards the earth, walk that left foot over, preparing for your lizard. Sorry, I should have told you to grab your blocks because we're just going to the other side and drop the back knee. Start to walk your left foot over to the left. Okay, now walk that left foot next to the left hand. Tuck the back toes, straighten that back leg. Spin the back foot down so it's like kind of a funny warrior one leg position. And then you're coming towards your side angle. Twist your torso up and then sweep that arm up and around a couple times. Inhale, exhale. Okay, pause in here. You can rest your hand on the hip or adding on, turn your torso towards the earth, extend your right arm, and then add on the left arm. So you're reaching towards the right. Okay, hands to the earth, coming towards your version of lizard. Maybe the forearms come to the earth, or you grab for that quad stretch. You can use your left hand to coax that knee away from you. Slowly release that top arm. And then you're gonna walk that left foot in preparing for more side lunges. Skandasana. And if you need to stay up high, you're still going to gain the benefit of this stretch. You can use your arms or maybe no hands. And if you want to add on the variation for a little bit more of a side stretch, you can reach your top arm towards all the way up towards the sky. Okay, last one. Take your blocks with you. Over to the right. Spin towards the earth. Take either a downward dog or a child's pose. If you're in your downward dog, you can step one foot through. If you're in your child's pose, swing your legs around, grab your strap. Come back to that reclined position on your, on your back. We're gonna start with the left leg. Put your foot into the strap so that the ball of your foot is pressing, like you're gonna press into a gas pedal. Externally rotate the foot and bend your knee towards your armpit. So the leg is coming outside the torso 
inhale back towards the sky and that standing leg is really planted earthing so we're coming it's like similar to that uh sorry the lizard that we just did inhale but this time you're doing it on the ceiling exhale externally rotate the leg first and then draw the knee towards the armpit inhale up exhale bend inhale straight Exhale, bend. Inhale up. This time, take the sh both straps into the right hand. Externally rotate, bend the knee, and we're gonna pause here. So you can take your left arm and wrap it around the thigh, or if it's available, can you take your left hand outside the left foot, release the strap, let it just hang off the foot, and then the right arm comes across the body and then just hugs the thigh in. If that's really easy for you, you can extend your right leg long. It's not really available for me, but your leg is going to be glued towards the earth there. If you're holding onto the strap with your right hand, can you walk your hand closer to the foot so that the arm is straight and then plug your shoulder into your spine so that you're not overusing that bicep? Staying here, three more rounds of breath. You don't have to count, but if you like to, feel free. And again, did you go into persistent resistance or can you back off a little bit and create space for your body to relax? Cultivating calm. Okay, inhale, we're going to take the left foot towards the sky and take the straps into both hands. This time, extend your right leg long. Remember, you can extend your leg as far away from the body as you need so that your low back can stay long and so that you're, you have plenty of space to straighten out that leg. We're going to take both straps into the right hand. Take your left thumb into the left hip crease. So you're already creating this length for the low back and you might feel a lot happening. Now we're gonna take the left foot across the body, maybe just two inches, doesn't have to be far to get towards that outer IT band. If you're doing this properly, you don't have to take the leg too far. So set yourself up so that you can feel a hamstring stretch before you take the leg over. Inhale, come back to the center. We're just gonna do it two more times. Exhale. You can always walk your hand up the strap if you notice that your arm is starting to bend. A little bit more energy through the ball of the left foot, really press into the strap. Activate that chain of energy up the leg. Inhale back to the center. There's gonna be the last one. Exhale. Are you really working that right quad standing leg as if you were standing up right now? Inhale back to the center, switch sides, both straps into the left hand, externally rotate. You can tee the arm or place your right hand on the front of the right thigh to help coax that leg down. And then we're gonna open up and again, if your arm, left arm is bending, walk your, walk your fingers up the strap towards your foot. Big toe pose. If you can grab your big toe, go ahead. You can create a slight external rotation of that left leg as if your toes are going to touch the floor before your heel. More energy through your straight standing leg. And if you tee the arm, that's great. Okay, inhale, left foot back towards the sky, both hands, both straps, and just take your basic hamstring stretch right now. Can you feel your left sit bone reaching towards that right foot? What if you give yourself a little bit more space and then try it again? Take your left sit bone towards the right foot.
Okay, bend the standing leg. So plant your right foot. We're coming towards figure four again. I know we already did it. Inhale, arms to the sky. We're gonna thread the needle this time. And just pause here. Careful with the knee. You wanna make sure to take those left toes back towards your knee or flexing the foot. And then you can rock side to side if that feels good. You can even use that left elbow to coax the left knee away from you, getting a deeper stretch. If you want another hamstring stretch, right foot can go towards the sky. Can you draw your tailbone away from you, creating that length for the low back? Two more breaths. Can you really let yourself soak in this shape? Let it be easy. Okay, unwind the legs, grab your strap. We're gonna take the right foot into the strap, switching sides, left foot to the earth. Okay, find your basic hamstring stretch here. I'm gonna switch around so that I have space. So you can already feel your arms straight, externally rotate your right leg and then bend your knee towards the armpit. Your leg is coming outside the torso. So the knee doesn't come in towards the chest. That would look like this. We're bringing the knee towards the armpit. Inhale straight to the sky. Exhale, externally rotate. Bend that knee towards the armpit. Inhale up. Exhale, bend. Inhale. You can really feel ball of the foot pressing into the strap. The strap is not on your arch. Inhale up. A little more energy through your left foot. Do it one last time. Pause. Both straps into the left hand. Right arm ratchet, wraps, wraps like a hug behind that thigh. If it's available, take your right hand outside the right foot, continue to hold on the strap, or take your left arm across the body and just hug the thigh towards your side body. Plug both shoulders in. If your left arm is bent on holding onto the strap, can you walk your hand closer up towards the foot? If this is easy, extend your left leg long. Otherwise, energy through the standing foot to help stabilize back of the pelvis. We're in step number two. You have already arrived. What are you adding on? What are you paying attention to? What are you inviting? One more generous breath. Inhale as the right foot comes towards the sky, both hands, both straps. Basic hamstring stretch right here. Okay, extend your left leg long, both hands into the both hands, both hands, both straps into the left hand, right thumb, right hip crease. Already just give yourself some extra space and some grace here and use that thumb in the crease to help lengthen out your spine. So it's that idea of the right sit bone moving towards the left foot. We're creating length for the low back right now by stretching the hips.
Okay, now you can come back to movement of the leg. We're gonna take that leg two inches across the body. You can keep the thumb in the hip crease or T the arm. Inhale back to the center. Do you need to give yourself more space with the strap or do you need to maybe bring the foot closer over your face so that you feel a deeper stretch? Adjust how you need to. Inhale back to the center. Last one, crossing the body. IT band outside of the leg. Inhale back to the center. Okay, take the strap into the right hand. Either take the left hand onto the earth, T the arm, or use that left hand to continue to coax left side of the body towards the earth. Externally rotate your right foot, that first position, and then dropping that leg open for your inner thigh stretch. You can walk your hand closer to the foot and if it's available, grab the big toe with peace sign fingers. More energy through your standing leg. This is a lot of work here. Can you plug your shoulder towards the body so that the shoulder blade is not coming away from the spine? Toes reaching towards the earth like they're gonna touch down before your heel. You got this one more breath. Inhale, right foot comes back towards the sky. Bend the left knee so that the foot plants coming towards your figure four. I always get a weird crack in the knee for that. Hope you guys feel okay. <laughs> Hands towards the sky. It's the right arm through the gap coming towards thread the needle. Or maybe you grab in front of the shin. Flex out your right foot. You can even take that right elbow towards the right knee to coax it away. If it's too much, you can always use your strap to give your legs more space here. Meeting yourself with what's available, not what you want it to be. Can you plug in your shoulders? We're gonna hang out just a little bit longer. Do you wanna rock side to side? Okay, let's slowly come out of it. Let's take both feet into the strap. And then we're coming towards this supported snail pose. Feet come up over the head, almost like you're starting to go towards a plow pose. Exhale, release your spine to the earth. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Exhale. Low back to the earth. Release your strap. Both knees in. Okay, this time we're going to scissor the knees. One knee forward, one knee back. Switch. 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 Figure eight. Let your knees come away from each other and then back around. So you start with the scissor. Can you let your arms really take over the legs here? It's that deep stirring that we did at the beginning of class. 
but the legs are going opposite directions in the circles. And when you're ready, you'll switch sides. Relax your belly. Relax back of the neck, base of the skull. Okay, both knees come in. We're gonna rock and roll. A couple more. Massage the spine. When you're ready, come up and over towards tabletop or downward dog. If you're in your downward dog, reach your right leg towards the sky. If you're in your um, tabletop, just reach that back right leg towards the back of the mat. And then we're coming towards our half pigeon. So draw the right knee towards the right right hand and then you'll start to walk yourself back modification for this is like similar to what we did earlier just let your hips fall to the earth and the knees come down remember when we were doing that um passive range of motion the windshield wiper knees otherwise you can take a support under the knee for your half pigeon either sitting tall or fold over that front leg. You can always use a block under the forehead or kickstand on kick hands, little tripod. Giving some support and feedback for the forehead can help to release the back of the neck. Go ahead, bring your torso up. Couple options here. You can take a three-legged dog towards that scorpion so that you're going to get the hip flexor stretch or come back towards that tabletop. Stick your right foot towards the back of the mat and come towards the side plank. Or you're in that three-legged dog with the top knee bent. Okay, everybody downward dog or your tabletop if you're not doing down dog. Right leg lifts or stick your, sorry, left leg. Left leg lifts or to the back of the mat, moving towards your half pigeon. Finding whatever support you need, if you need to use the block, and then recline your body towards the mat. And remember, we're always, we're efforting and moving towards having that shin towards the top of the mat, but you want to set your leg up in a position so that you're not going to tweak your knee. And every day it's a little bit different. And that's okay. Meeting yourself in reality rather than those unrealistic expectations of your body. And can you add on the breath?
Okay, starting to prepare, prepare to come out of the pose, step three, exiting. And then your choice, you're either gonna take the modified side plank or the three-legged dog. Three-legged dog towards scorpion, open everything up, bend that top knee, or you're in your tabletop, left foot back of the mat, coming towards your side plank. Okay, exhale, come back to the center, downward dog or tabletop. And then we're gonna sweep the legs around. Just a couple more seated stretches before we finish. We're gonna come back to that same stretch we did earlier. Left, left foot in, sitting tall. You can take your kickstand or you're taking your right arm across the body, either grabbing the foot or the left knee. Inhale. Or left arm reaches up. This might be enough. If you want more, side bend up and over. Inhale back to the center. Plug in that shoulder so that you're not reaching up. You're keeping that shoulder anchored. And then you can take your side bend. Inhale, up and over. I mean, back to center, and then last one. And then this time, come back to the center, open up the arms, twist open towards that right leg, and then dive forward. You can grab your strap and use that if you want. If you prefer, you can always take this leg behind you. Sometimes that gives me more availability for the hamstring. Find your stretch. Can you let it be enough just as it is? Inhale, sit tall, five. Four, three, two, one, switch sides. Right knee in, left leg long. Take your right, sorry, I'm gonna mess this up again. Left hand across the body, either grabbing the foot or the knee, right arm towards the sky. You might already have enough right here. If it's not available, just sit tall with your kickstand arms. Still enough. And then side bend if it's available and you want more. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale up and over. Inhale, last one. Really anchor your right shoulder to the spine. Come back to the center, open the arms, tee the arms, twist towards that left leg, exhale, take your stretch. Add on the strap if that's helpful for you. And if you wanna turn your bent leg back towards more of that um, virasana, half virasana, Layering in that breath, breath of wisdom, breath of peace. Inhale, sitting up, five, four, three, two, one, and then option to take both legs long, 
either the kickstand arms, knees can be bent here, or you can take your hands inside the legs and just sit up against that grounding of the femurs. So depending what's available for your body, if it's available and your legs are straight and you wanna fold forward, you can do that. Otherwise, bend the knees and sit tall in the spine. You can put your hands behind you to really coax the lower back forward. And even when the knees are bent, we can still ground the femur using this thigh. So it's an action of picking the knee up to activate the front of the upper leg. Good. Okay, we're coming towards our Sukhasana. Fold one shin in front of the other, and we're just going to rock forward and back. Last one. This time kickstand hands as you turn the flip the other shin in front. Just rocking forward and back here. If there's anything else that's calling for your body, go ahead and add that now. Maybe you want to take a half bridge or a seated twist. Otherwise, you're going to start to lower your body to the earth, grab your support if you want to have a support under the knees. If you want to take a longer Shavasana here, go ahead and turn off your video and you can set yourself up for a longer Shavasana and you'll end on your own. If the low back is sensitive and you don't have support, take your feet as wide or wider than the mat and let your knees just touch together. Finding space for release, finding space for surrender. Final posture. Can you let it be easy? And we're going to go for quality rather than quantity for our Shavasana here. Really letting yourself sink deep within. Connecting back with your intention, using your breath. So let your breath take you there. Feeling that expansive quality of the breath, expansive quality of your body, all that movement that you flowed through with the yoga practice. Knowing as you move through the rest of this day, you can create that expansion in your mind making choices that support your body, your breath, your intentions, goals, and desires, making decisions that feel good. Really just giving yourself permission to come back to that place of integrity. When you're ready, bending your knees. Maybe you like to hug the knees in again, that's okay whatever way you like to come up. Keep your eyes closed. We'll come towards seated. We're gonna take one finger towards the third eye center. Eyes are still closed. Create that length in the spine. If you need to take support under the hips, please add on. Allowing your chakras to line up here. 
as a preparation for this coming solstice, this energetic portal, knowing that everything you need is inside of you. Hands to your heart. Palm to palm, fingertip to fingertip. Create this space across the front of your chest, that space for freedom at the upper lobes of your lungs. And then we'll bring the hands up to the forehead. So press your forehead into the thumbs, back to that third eye, chakra center, place of guidance. Place of inner leadership. hands back to the heart and then we'll take one breath together mm, breathing in breathing out thank you making sure to really support your body with your choices also what you're putting into your body so um, detoxification support, whether that's lots of water, warm tea, maybe some lemon or honey if your throat is needing a little extra love. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.